I'm Rindon with TJ Free. In this video, I want to share with you my top five favorite free video editing programs that'll work on Windows, Linux, and Mac. These programs are Shotcut, Caden Live, OpenShot, DaVinci Resolve, and Blender. These programs are all legitimately free to download and use for both personal and commercial use. Like I mentioned before, they're cross-platform. They're not gonna give you viruses. These are good, legitimate programs. There's no watermark that's gonna be put over top of your finished video. I will say the one program in here that's unique from the rest is DaVinci Resolve. It's a, it's a proprietary program. It's not open source, but they do have a very good full-featured free version, which is why I included it in here. So these are all great programs for producing high-quality professional video. They're also good for, for just a hobbyist or personal use. Um, I'll include the download links and more information about each of these. If you're interested in them, I have some tutorials showing how to use a lot of the features of these programs as well. But we're just going to dive in super quick here, give a little quick overview of each one, show you the interface and some examples, and then you can decide if it's something you want to uh, go for and invest some time into learning or not. All right, let's take a look at Shotcut. Shotcut is quickly becoming one of my favorite video editors. I use it heavily on Linux because it's very quick and responsive, has a nice clean interface, and the rendering is much faster than Caden Live. It has great support, so you have really good tutorials. There's forums where you can ask questions and get answers. It's under active development, so there's new features uh, being added all the time. This is showing some of the different transitions that are built in. Um, transitions are very easy to apply in Shotcut and very quick. And like I said, that's one of the big selling points for me on Shotcut is it's just quick. You can bring in footage very quickly, edit it, and get it out the door without having to, to you know, waste a lot of time on it. It has different color grading tools for adjusting color. They're all key frameable as well. In fact, a lot of the filters are key frameable, so you can um, dynamically change it throughout different parts of the video. It has a built-in filter for chroma key, and it's actually really, really nice um, compared to some of the ones, uh, other ones we're gonna look at. Um, it, it functions well, it has a simple and advanced version. You can do compositing and have multiple clips uh, interacting with each other like we do in this case. So Shotcut is definitely a video editor worth looking into. The next program is Caden Live. Caden Live has been my go-to video editor for several years now. It's what I use in the studio to produce all of my YouTube content. It's also what I use for client work. It works on Windows and Mac, and that's sort of a more recent update. Historically, Caden Live has been strong in the Linux community. It has a lot of a great user base, a lot of good documentation. This is what the interface looks like. So you can work with multiple timelines. You can apply effects to clips. Uh, it's also very responsive and has a ton of filters, a ton of effects, um, just a really great program. So you can work with different transitions. You can create your own custom transitions. Um, you can do video in video uh, like this or picture in picture. Uh, really good audio tools um, and also key frameable so you can adjust audio at different points uh, of your clip. Um, you can do animated text and titles and have a lot of control over that. One of the features I use a lot is this blur and obscure to hide out certain parts of a video. Also really good uh, chroma key green screen effects if you want to do some compositing um, basic animation. Um, it works really well. The keyframing is actually really um, stable and really good in Caden Live. And one thing I really like about Caden Live is that it works well on low powered machines. So this is a hundred dollar Chromebook that I have running a Linux operating system on, and I'm able to run Caden Live pretty well on it. Um, I also use this is my main video editing workstation that I use at the studio. This is what I use for Caden Live video editing, and so it's actually very very powerful. The next program is OpenShot, and OpenShot has a very good intuitive interface. It's not overly complex. This is a good one for like your grandma or maybe your parents that aren't super into um, using computers. They're kind of confused. Um, also really good community, really good support, and it's under active development. Um, so here's the interface. So you just see much simpler. There's not as much to, to distract you, and it's just much more simpler. Everything's very graphical, very large and bubbly. Um, it's actually a software that I have my kids use for video editing, and they really enjoy it, and they really just take to it, and they just know how to use it. Just like I said, it's intuitive. Um, there is a trade-off there, though, because so it doesn't have all of the advanced features that you would find in Caden Live and some of these other uh, video editors that we're looking at. 
But that being said, it is very functional, and it does have um, some, like these transitions here, are really, really cool and sort of not, not incredibly customizable, but they are a little bit more complex than some of the stock ones from other video editors. You can apply effects here. Also, a, a rudimentary built-in chroma key feature. Um, I say rudimentary because you can't clean up all the, the green at the edge depending on the model you're using. You can adjust color and contrast and brightness of the clips. Uh, and so there are some a limited uh, amount of effects uh, built into OpenShot at the time being. Some really cool title effects, though. So you can have uh, just title screens uh, that, are, that are customizable. You can also have animated titles uh, that are really cool. And so these animated titles, although at, the, at this point in time, they take quite a long time to render, at least on my computer, it's still a really cool feature. This next software is DaVinci Resolve. This is an industry standard color grading software is what it started out as. And over the past few years, they've added in different um, compositing and video editing and audio tools. It is a commercial proprietary software that has a free trial version. And we'll show, I'll show you here, we do run into the limits of the trial version here. So just be aware, it is not open source software. But the interface is very nice. It can be a little complex because it has some of those these extra features that is highly customizable, but not necessarily intuitive. Um, and it's kind of geared more towards professionals and industry people that have worked with video before that want to have a lot of control over all elements. So here's an example of trying to add an effect that is only supported in the professional for in the paid proprietary version. So you can add text to your video, you can do speed and slow, you can add different transitions and effects to individual clips. So all the same things that, that any other software can do, it of course can do as well. And the last one we'll look at is Blender. Now Blender you probably know of as a 3D modeling and 3D compositing animation software, but it also has a pretty solid uh, video editing tool built into it. And so um, the software has been around for a long, long time, and it has all kinds of functionality. This is just a quick look at the video editing in Blender. I touched on it a couple years ago. I, I was really getting into video editing with Blender. Uh, I, I admit it's not something that I use. It's the one that, of all these, it's the one that I've used the least. I do know, though, that it is really powerful. So you can have multiple tracks, of course. You can work with audio, video, different compositing effects. And so if you know the power of Blender, you know um, the different effects you can apply to this. And I imagine it really is going to shine if you're already designing like a 3D model in Blender that you want to work into a video project. I imagine it would really uh, work well in those applications. Um, you have to know a little bit more. Uh, it's sort of more like DaVinci Resolve in that it's very complex. It has a high degree of customization, but it's not going to be as intuitive. It expects you to know um, more about frame rates and video codecs and uh, you know layers and compositing and different things that you're going to be doing. It doesn't just let you drag and drop and everything works just easy peasy. Definitely something to consider, especially if you're already a strong user of Blender. So these are the free video editors that I wanted to share with you today. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below. Let me know which of these you like to use or maybe what you don't like about some of these programs. I will say these are all very full-featured, capable programs for doing professional work. And my hope is that before you drop a bunch of money into buying a video editing program that you think is going to improve the quality of your videos, I hope you'll look at these first. And I think what you're going to find is these are actually probably going to meet your needs whether it's on the low end just for a, a home hobbyist uh, movie or a high-end professional work for a client. It's just a matter of getting familiar with the interface. But this is open source software, at least except for DaVinci Resolve. It's open source software, which means it's always continually being upgraded and perfected. New features are being added. And so unlike a program like WordPerfect or Corel back in the day that's maybe used to be the big thing and now no one uses it anymore, these programs are always going to be at the cutting edge of technology. So Invest the time in learning to use these, and I promise it'll pay off over time. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.